Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to Subnautica Below Zero with the Mighty Jingles. I found a lab that looked like it had been sabotaged intentionally. The outside was mostly intact, and the equipment inside seemed like it might have been appropriate for bacteriology, before a fire tornado ran through it. Is it somehow related to Sam's death? Who would have wanted to destroy the place? That is an excellent question, Robin, one which I'm fairly sure I'm not going to find the answer to today. One on the way back to Fort Jingles, however, after passing through the sort of anchored sea lily pads, I came across this area of thermal vents where I discovered some very, very useful things. These are not the only thermal vents in Subnautica Below Zero, but they are the only ones that are coloured sort of pink and purple. And there's all kinds of useful wreckage scattered around here. What do we have here? You'll note that I have the sea truck, although I can only take it down to a maximum depth of 150 meters, but this is absolutely fine, because there isn't anything here below a depth of 150 meters. So there's a jukebox disc, a fabricator module fragment for the sea truck, another basic sea truck fragment, but I've already got that. So it just converts to titanium and my inventory is full. But there are all kinds of sea truck modules scattered around here. As well as parts of the fabricator module, there are also parts of the aquarium module. Which is only really going to be useful if you're playing the game in survival. Warning. Passing 100 meters. Oxygen efficiency decreased. And there's a lot of lithium. And lithium is a fairly vital component in all kinds of advanced material technology. So I'm going to be grabbing as much of this stuff as I possibly can. This is also a reasonably safe area. I mean, you can hear the sound of the vents going off, and there's a sound of something very angry swimming around as well. But there are no reapers, there are no leviathans. And it's not really that scary, which I found a little disappointing. Because I can remember playing the original Subnautica and absolutely shitting bricks any time I was around the wreck of the ship that I crashed in because of the Reaper that patrolled the waters. And you could just hear it off in the distance. Sometimes not that far off in the distance. But around here, we just saw one of the... there's another one. I don't know what they're called, but they're not really that dangerous. So there isn't really that much sense of danger while you're scavenging the seabed around these thermal vents. You can really afford to take your time and just make sure you get everything. All of the hostile fauna around here... I mean, if they catch you out in the open, they'll take a chunk out of you, but they don't really seem to be terribly threatening. And truth be told, I hardly ever notice them other than as a source of background noise. Significant geothermal activity detected below. Beware of high pressure and temperatures. And these aren't the only things that you're going to find in the vicinity of these thermal vents. There's an entire crashed ship down here. As it sank, this ship, which goes by the name of the Mercury 2, broke into two separate parts. One of which is significantly bigger than the other. Maximum depth reached. Oh, crap. Damage imminent. Went below. I mean, this is right at the maximum diving depth. The current maximum diving depth of my sea truck. And this is the smaller of the two fragments. Now, the sea truck can't go down any deeper than this, but I can. Now I just need to find a way in. Plenty of metal salvage lying around, but that's just a source of titanium. Some uranium crystals. And that certainly looks worth investigating. Let's take a quick look. Don't have a huge amount of oxygen. This goes down to about 200 meters. Oxygen efficiency greatly decreased. Oh, there's some... Whoa, what was that? 
let's not stick around and find out. Look like some kind of precursor technology down there, which I'm definitely going to want to investigate. Not quite sure what hit me, but it didn't do any damage. Although at below 200 metres. I mean, my oxygen efficiency is decreased below 100 metres because I don't have the rebreather. Warning. 30 seconds of oxygen remaining. But it's seriously compromised below 200 metres because I don't have the rebreather. And I can only take the sea truck down to 150 metres at the moment. So realistically, I can't really do my usual trick of using the sea truck as a sort of portable oxygen resupply station, taking it down as deep as it'll go and then exploring further using the sea glide. I mean, I can, but I just can't do it for long. It's the lack of the rebreather. Um, that's the main bar to progress right now, and I have no idea, none whatsoever, where I can get the uh, rebreather schematics from. But I'm sure it'll turn up, sooner or later. It's such an important and invaluable piece of equipment that, well, you probably wouldn't be able to complete the game if you didn't have the rebreather, so it's guaranteed to turn up sooner or later. I just don't know where yet. Anyway, inventory's full, back to Fort Jingles, did some quick Welcome repairs on the sea truck, Captain. and it's time to start taking stock. It doesn't look like the fish that I collected earlier are actually breeding inside the aquarium. I didn't think they were going to, but it was worth a try. I'm probably going to need the alien containment facility schematic before I can actually start breeding my own source of fuel for the bioreactor. One thing that I did pick up from the wrecked Omega Lab was this photo. That's uh, in the white Altera uniform, my sister Sam. And that holding her from behind is apparently me, Robin. Apparently Sam was my sister from another mister. I have to be completely honest here, the first time I saw this picture I started to get a bit pissed off. I thought that this was my sister Sam with her black lesbian girlfriend not realising that that was actually my character in the background of the photo. Initially, upon looking at the photograph, I thought I was getting some sort of indication as to how I could expect the plot to develop and that all of the online rage about how Below Zero is the poster boy for the woke agenda was actually true. Um, but it isn't. It really isn't. I thought that was going to be the case, but it's nowhere near as bad as people have been making it out to be. I have actually played through the whole story now, and yes, you play a black female character here trying to discover what happened behind the events that led to the death of her sister Sam, an employee of the Altera Corporation. And that's it. I really don't understand what everybody was getting their knickers in a twist over. But well, it's the internet, and the internet has never really needed a particularly good reason to get excited or angry about anything, so to be expected. Honestly, after having played through the entire game, I can guarantee you that if you want to get upset about things in Subnautica Below Zero, the fact that you play a black female character is absolutely the least of them. There are far, far better things in Subnautica Below Zero for you to be getting yourself upset about than that. But enough on that for now. This is still early days. We are starting to get slightly ahead of ourselves. So anyway, shortly afterwards I'm back in the sea truck, maximum crush depth is still only 150 metres, and I'm heading to an area that's known as the Twisty Bridges, and one look at it will hopefully explain why it's known as the Twisty Bridges, to investigate something that Calcutta Tech Support has identified as an alien distress signal. And there is a clear example of precursor technology down here. I guess we just follow the precursor technology. If you're wondering to yourself, hang on a minute, given that the Altera Corporation has staked a claim on this planet precisely for the purposes of investigating precursor technology, also given that I am armed with nothing more complicated than a PDA and I have managed to pick up this signal, and the Altera Corporation has this entire planet ringed with observation and surveillance satellites, surely they have also managed to pick up this signal, and if that's the case, oops, to be careful not to go, uh, go below 150 metres. But if that's the case, how come the Altera Corporation haven't sent somebody down to investigate? Then all I can say to you is don't ask questions like that. <laughs> there are certain things in Subnautica Below Zero that it really does not pay to ask questions about, and this is one of them. So since the sea truck can't go below 150 metres without imploding, 
let's just hope, bearing in mind that I'm approaching 200 metres and my oxygen efficiency is not fantastic without a rebreather, let us hope that there are lots of these oxygen plants and wherever I'm going is not too far away. Just follow the blinking green lights and all of the alien technology. And it's not too far ahead. There's another oxygen plant there, but I don't really need it. We'll save it for the way out, and here we are. Just taking a quick look around first before I head inside, because I've never been down this deep before. I'm now at 200 metres, and there might be things lying around that are worth picking up. And we're in. Such a power critical. Hello? Is someone there? In a manner of speaking, we're running out of time. You may also be thinking to yourself, hang on a minute, if this is an alien signal, how do I know it's a distress call? How does a handheld PDA have the processing power to translate an alien signal and decide that it's a distress call? Once again, I would advise you to not ask too many questions like that when you're playing below zero. What is all this? I can help you better if you show yourself. If we could show ourselves, we would not need storage. You mean you don't have a physical presence? Are you one of them? An architect? Storage medium identified. We will be lost unless we find a new host. Can you help? Can you use my PDA for storage? You were not with the group from before. Your cybernetic components may have their signal. Altera? <laughs> no, my equipment is, uh, borrowed. You will have to do. Ooh, ion cells. I am definitely going to take these. Uh, these were the incredibly rare alien power sources in the original Subnautica. They are not incredibly rare in Below Zero. In Subnautica, you required these ion cubes for the kind of technology that was actually going to make it possible to complete the game. That is not the case in Below Zero, which is probably why they're so keen on throwing them around right at the beginning because you really don't need them. How long have you been stored here? Longer than that. Warning. Sanctuary power. Critical. Our data can be downloaded from the terminal. We may speak more once the transfer is completed. Yes, okay. Hurry. Storage medium accepted. Brace from Brace? Ah! What's happening? Chancellor. Ah! Ah! complete. How do you feel? Why do you sound like you're inside my head? The facility identified hospitable capacity within your cerebral cortex. You are in my head? I offered you my PDA! Get out! Oh no. Does your kind perceive a boundary between cybernetic and organic components? My mind is not a component! You sound angry. We will allow you a moment to process. Don't you go silent on me. <laughs> explanation. It's not happening. So, we have a technically live member of the Precursor race piggybacking in my head and his name's Alan. So that's nice. Well, since I'm down here anyway, I thought I would investigate the deep twisty bridges because there are guaranteed to be resources down here that I'm going to need for the depth upgrades for the sea truck. Now, this is a little risky, because there's a squid shark down here, <laughs> but there are lots of oxygen plants. Oh, there we go, diamonds, that's exactly what I'm after. I'll take two, and then I'll get the hell out of here. You are going to have to do this using the sea glide, and you are 150 metres below the safe diving depth of your sea truck at this point. 
which is why you're down here in the first place trying to find diamonds so you can manufacture that first sea truck depth upgrade. It is doable as long as you're careful and you keep an eye on your oxygen meter. There are plenty of oxygen plants. You'd have to seriously lose your sense of direction. Oh, some lead. I'm going to need that too. But you'd have to seriously lose your sense of direction in order to not make it out of here alive. I'll just grab that table coral while I'm here as well. And some quartz. Need the table coral for making computer chips. Which is going to be a component in a lot of things that you're going to need to make. But despite the fact that you are well below 200 meters and going through oxygen at an incredible rate and well below the crush depth of the sea truck, this is entirely doable. As long as you're careful, you stay away from the squid shark and you remember where all of the oxygen plants are. We understand this arrangement is undesirable to you. You're not real. Go away. To go, we require a suitable body for transfer. Why do you keep saying we? How many of you are there? One of us and all of us. We do not think of ourselves as an individual. It is stupid. Why don't you start by telling me who you are? You may append your seed code to my species designation. Please call me Al. My whole life I've been dying to meet a sapient space-fearing alien up close, and you're telling me your name is Alan? Is it insufficient? No, it's fine. It's perfect. Where are you from, Alan? Your client calls us architects. The precursor race? But what are you doing here? That is a long story. Perhaps you would prefer to focus on the construction of a new storage medium to which I may transfer. Yes. Fine, absolutely. How do we get you out of my head? I have added the information to your data bank. You will need to find the necessary components. Any idea where I can find them? It is unclear. I have been disconnected from my network for so long I cannot locate the coordinates. <sighs> And so eventually, after a couple of hours of gameplay, we come to the actual plot of Subnautica Below Zero. You have an alien in your head who goes by the name of Alan, and you require the tissues, skeleton and organs that he's going to need to manufacture a body for himself so that you can get him out of your head. At this point, we don't actually know where those Welcome different components are, but I can guarantee they're going to be a damn sight deeper than 150 metres. So it's a good job we found ourselves some diamonds. Because I'm going to need to manufacture some upgrades for the good old sea truck. And so I fired up the old fabricator to see what I need for the Mark 1 depth upgrade. Plasteel ingots and enameled glass. Hang on Jingles, I thought you said you needed diamonds. Well, you do need diamonds. You need diamonds for the enameled glass. So it's a good job I got two of them. As far as the plasteel is concerned, you only need titanium and lithium. And we've already got plenty of that. So we toss all of those shrimps onto the babby, cook ourselves a depth upgrade, and I can now take the sea truck down to a depth of 300 meters. Perfect for exploring the deep twisty bridges, but almost certainly not quite perfect enough to find the components required to get the Mark II upgrade to the sea truck, because, well, that's just the way this game works. But it's a good start, and we're going to be seeing what kind of trouble I can get into down at a depth of 300 meters or more in the next episode. I hope you've enjoyed this one, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.